Howdy, folks. It's Vile Mike here, and of course, with me is my vile child. You didn't say my name, but I'm gonna say it. Hi, everyone. And if you know me well, you know that my intro is "What up, peoples?" Just say your name already. <laughs> what up, peoples? I'm Caddy Knight. And this week we're reviewing the original series episode "Menagerie Part One." We open with the Enterprise above a purple marble. And we immediately switch to the surface of said purple marble, where we see a confused woman in a red uniform. We see the power trio beam in, and Kirk says that Spock received a message from the planet, which happens to be Starbase 11. But the confused woman says that they sent no message, but we'll take them to see the Commodore anyway. Kirk tells the Commodore that Spock received a message from Captain Pike, the former captain of the Enterprise, who Spock once served under. But the Commodore says that Pike could not have sent any message. He was in an accident on a training vessel. We cut to the hospital where we meet Captain Pike. I hate to be mean, but he looks like he really likes his grape jelly. Captain Pike, it seems, can only communicate via beeping light on his hover chair. One for yes, two for no. Actually, Caddy kind of does something similar when I ask her to do something, like one of her chores. One grunt for how dare you interrupt me when I'm on the phone with my friends. And two grunts for, fine, old man, I'll do it under protest. <sighs> Pike manages to convey that he does not want to see Kirk, but he allows Spock to stay. I can't see your hands in the way. Spock says that he has a pl- Spock says he has. Spock says he, ha- he has a plan, and that he must go through with it, even if he's disobeying Pike's orders. Cue opening credits. After the credits, Kirk and the Commodore talk about the obvious suspiciousness of Spock that cadence was all off. Kirk and the Commodore talk about the obvious suspiciousness of Spock's actions, while Kirk proclaims Spock's innocent. The Commodore orders the IT guy to check everything, even turning it off and on again. Spock walks into the IT department, and another nerf and takedown of an innocent bystander. Um, go Spock? We return to the Commodore's office where he introduces Kirk to this woman. She says that she knows a woman that Kirk has had contact with. Helen Johansson. Hmm. Another Helen. After Helen Noel from the Halloween episode. Maybe Kirk just has something for the name Helen. And Kirk looks like a deer in headlights. I want to know more about the story of this other Helen. Just go. Well, eating during a recording is not a good idea. I was trying to eat before! Anyway, she says it looks like Spock is hiding something, and then we cut to Spock manipulating the computers to send a fake message and a flight plan to the Enterprise. Spock's hacking the computer to fake orders to the Enterprise. This whole episode is just one huge, the crew could not tell someone was acting strange episode. They even try to argue away the strangeness by claiming Spock cannot lie when all the evidence is to the contrary. I mean, think of it this way. He is stealing the Enterprise, essentially. If Spock was a real spy, say, from the Romulans, they could just get themselves a nice shiny Connie class. Does that mean Spock is the villain? Kind of looks like it, doesn't it? We cut to Kirk and McCoy patting the runtime by arguing more about Spock. McCoy even defends Spock by saying Vulcans can't lie, and right after that he gets a fake emergency call by Spock. Irony, your name is Spock. The Commodore gives Kirk a book about Talos IV. A book. In a world full of computers and uh, data tapes. The file on General Order 7, the only death penalty worthy thing in the entire Federation, is a book. Is this thing on every ship in Starbase, or just this one because it's closest? And why in printed form? Even the Omega Directive was still on the computers in Voyager. So the Forbidden Planet is Talos IV, and the only ship that has ever visited it is the Enterprise, under Pike, with its science officer, Spock. Just then, the Enterprise warps away. They left Kirk behind. On the Enterprise, we learn that she can fly without a navigator. And they are in radio silent. And no one still notices the strangeness of Spock. Add it to the counter. But it does seem that McCoy is not buying it. Thank goodness. Wait, does that mean we don't add it to the counter? No, because everyone else does. We should Maybe we should add one for each crew member on this one. <laughs> so Spock leads him to Pike, taking more orders from Kirk. 
with Pike saying no in his blinky light way. Later, we find out that a shuttle is in pursuit, so we can establish that the F-Class shuttle, which the Enterprise computer says that's what it is, can travel at warp, but not as fast as the Enterprise, and it uses an ion drive, but apparently has very little fuel, and it's already running out. I'm sure that'll never be a problem in the future. Spock is not going to let Kirk die, thankfully, and stops the Enterprise to rescue him, and then Spock calls security on himself for mutiny. Kirk is beamed on board, but the computer still is in control of the Enterprise and heads for Talos 4 again. And apparently it can't be turned off without cross-circuiting the life support because plot reasons. Oh, and Spock demands a hearing. Kirk starts the hearing? Huh. This is the second one of the ser in the series so far. At this rate, a JAG office might be needed for all Federation ships. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Law and Order Starfleet Victims Unit. No. Oh. Anyway, at the hearing, Spock demands a full court-martial, and use, uses the technicality of that, spi uh, that spike. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't even, I really, really like then uses the technicality that Pike has stolen the active officers list to get his three officer court martial. Caddy, look! Shiny new uniforms for Kirk and the Commodore. <laughs> They're the ugly yellow green color. But I guess they have some gold? You know what? At least Spock, even though he's being a traitor, still looks good. Blue and gold. Perfect. They turn the TV on and we get a glimpse of the lost original pilot episode, The Cage, which happened 13 years ago. I just gotta ask one thing, though. Why does Kirk have Scotty control the effing TV screen and not figuring out a way to stop the ship? According to the Technobabble flashback, a ship called the SS Columbia was lost in the Talos area and maybe crashed on the M-Class planet. Also, radio signal is also 18 years old. Pike orders Dr. Boyce to join him in his quarters, and he comes in about two seconds later. Hey, Dad, where's the sick bay and the captain's quarters? I think Boyce may be part Sonic, too. I don't know about that, but Boyce brings Pike some alcohol. Is that something all 22nd century doctors do? That's it. Despite what they say, Starfleet doctors are officially bartenders. Boyce even admits to it! Pike talks about retiring, but the good doctor talks him out of it. Then Spock chimes in, saying that they have found survivors of the SS Columbia on Talos, so Pike orders to head that way. Pike says something about time warp. What is time warp? Uh, an example of that early Trek had not yet established firm nomenclature about the series yet. On the bridge, the computer prints out a science report about the planet. A paper printout. Oh my god. Also, why is Nurse Chapel with brown hair and a gold uniform? That's because it's the same actress, but in the original pilot, she played a different character. Oh, what's her name? Number one. No, her name. That's the only name we're ever given in canon. No other show tried to name her? Nope. No other canon show. Ever. Are you sure? Positive. Okay, then. So, Pike orders an away team. Why didn't they keep the jacket and that guy's backpack thing? Or other away missions? I don't know. They seem kind of cool. Later, they find a strange singing plant and... Ah! Spock smiling! Bad continuity! Burn the episode! Anger's my thing, Dad. Nitpicking's mine. Okay, I'm the one that's supposed to have a uh, random explosive anger. Except in discontinuity. That's my thing. They seem to have found survivors, a bunch of rowdy looking men, and a clean hot chick. Nothing suspicious about that. And if that didn't seem suspicious, then we cut to some big headed aliens spying on them. Boyce says that the survivors are too healthy for, for being stranded for so long. 
And then the girl shows Pike the secret. Then the girl disappears along with the survivors. Oh, and the big head aliens capture Pike. Spock and Ensign Eager fire phasers into the door where Pike was taken, but they have no major effect. I guess 13 year, year ago phasers weren't that good. I still want a phaser. No. Please? Maybe for New Year's. Yay! Spock calls number one to tell her that there actually were no survivors and the captain's been taken. la ti da Back at the hearing, Starbase calls the Commodore saying that tr transmissions that the Enterprise has been receiving from Talos IV. Kirk is relieved of command and that the Commodore, which he only spelt with one M, is put in charge. Kirk pleads with Spock, but the only thing Spock can say is that he must watch the rest of the transmission. To be continued. Now, we're not really going to do any analysis this time, because this is just part one, and it's the only part, or it's the only two-part episode in all of Trek. So, basically, we're just going to end it here. Caddy, say the thing. I have one thing to say before I say a thing. How in hell could they not give Pike a better chair in a universe with spaceships, phasers that can make coffee, make heat, be able to cut through metal? They can't give Pike a better chair? So much for no analysis, people. <laughs> Why can't they give Pike a better chair? Anyways, like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next time, folks. Later. Bye-bye. We see the power tree. Oh, Sorry, hold on. Blah, 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 blah. I kind of want to know more about this story of the other Helen. That sounded weird. I'm going to redo it. Stop eating my damn ice cream. No. I'm not hungry. I don't want any ice cream. <laughs> Eat all my fucking ice cream.